What is up guys, Ash and Jake from AJ Reacts here and welcome to our Champions League 2023-2024 preview. So basically for this video we are going to be analysing each group and making our predictions on who we think is going to qualify to the knockout stages, who's going to drop down to Europa League and who the fourth uh, team in each group will be that won't qualify for Europe and is just out. And after we made our predictions we'll also be making a prediction on well our favourites to win the Champions League this year at this moment in time and also making some predictions on who's the top goal scorer, who we think is going to make the most clean sheets, blah 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 and just uh, make our prediction from there but first we're going to be talking about Group A of course and in that group we have Bayern Munich, Manchester United who are making a return after a small absent on Champions League, Copenhagen and Galatasaray. Now, I'm just going to make a quick analysis on this, Ash, then I'll come back to you. Um, Bayern, of course, are going to be the ones to qualify. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And most people will probably have Manchester United as the team that is going to come second. But if I'm being honest, I don't think Man United are guaranteed in this group. Because after their poor, poor start to the season that they've had already... And the issues they've had off the pitch as well. And Galatasaray coming into this. They have got a pretty decent side. They've got a front three that is just menacing. They've got pace. They've got some experience throughout their team. And I think they are going to give Man United a run for their money. I mean, what, what, how do you feel about it? Uh, personally, yeah, I've got to agree with you in that Bayern Munich analysis. In regards of they are by far the strongest team. One of the favourites, I think, after getting Harry Kane. That was a huge acquisition for them. Um, in terms of Galatasaray, they've made huge signings. They've made huge additions. I just think Man United, when they come into the Champions League, no matter how bad they could be doing domestically, they do give it a good run most of the time. And I think, I can't remember the last time like we saw a Champions League upset for Manchester United. We've seen... Obviously, them get knocked out, but against teams, you know, going to give them a good run for it. And I just don't, I haven't seen Galatasaray do anything in European football since their historic Europa League or Euro, Euro Cup win. Um, so in that regard, I just think Manu will just edge second place. Galatasaray, if they're going to make a presence in this tournament, every home game, their fans need to be like how we know Galatasaray fans yeah. can be. Be that genuine 12th man on that pitch and get it roaring. If they can turn their home ground into a fortress, right, and get results there, maybe they've got a shout. I definitely do think they'll finish third. And I think United will clinch second place purely because the way that things are going, Man U are very cutthroat with their managers. So if Ten Hag keeps underperforming, they could get rid of him, get someone in like Dylan Dean Zidane, Nagelsmann, even Antonio Conte. And either of those managers or managers of that regard will come in and have immediate effect and at least get them in second place. I don't think they'll do anything to impress us going forwards in the entire tournament in terms of knockout stages. But I think Manu will shine through purely because of the experience they have as well. Players like Casemiro will have a huge presence in the Champions League. Uh, Varane himself uh, will be the first time we're going to see him in the Champions League after a year's absence. Um, yes, Players like Rashford are not performing how they should. Bruno, he's not performing how he should. We could still see more of Hojland or Hoyland, however you want to call it. I think they'll edge it. Um, Copenhagen, I think they've just been stitched up in this group, to be honest. Uh, and I think yeah, they're, they're going to be they're the battering ram of this group. And I think it'll be every team will be going there, getting their three points, boosting their confidence levels and going into the next game. Um, the only thing I need to, I'd say, maybe watch out for is if... Players get injured or whatever's happening with Man United and they keep having, you know, key starters missing. That could potentially be an issue. But even then, like, they've got Garnacho who can step in for Anthony after his absence. You know, Sancho's absent. They could probably put Palestri in there. And I think Palestri is well due uh, an opportunity in the first team. I just think Man U will just about do it in that regard. But I, get, I definitely can see an upset happening. I just don't see enough of it for me to agree with you. 
Okay. Well, I mean, so you're going for Bayern Munich top. We both are. And you're going for Man United second to qualify. But i got to be honest, I could just still see them performing the way they're performing and probably get a couple of results in the Champions League. I don't think that Galatasaray are going to walk away with it. But I think they'll probably just edge it. I reckon it's going to be a close affair between them two. But I think Galatasaray will qualify for uh, the knockout stages. And then Man United third. But then we both agree that Copenhagen, you've got no chance. No chance. Okay, now we're moving into Group B. Arsenal, who are finally back in the Champions League after a long period out. Since 2017, they have not played in the Champions League. And one of the best teams in the Premier League at this moment in time. Sevilla, last year's Europa League champions. PSV and then French side Lens. Now going into this, obviously like uh, Group A, Arsenal would definitely be the guaranteed team to qualify. They've got too much quality for them not to qualify for the Champions League. And second place for me, I think it's quite a tough one. It's a real tight affair, I think. Uh, you have Sevilla, who are the Europa League champions. And then you have PSV, who've got some very exciting players, a lot of pace in their team. I feel it's just going to be another case, to be honest, that Sevilla are just going to drop down to the Europa League and just retain their title. And if I'm looking at this logically as well, they've had a poor start, poor, poor start to La Liga. Um, they're 19th right now. Yeah. And they lost Bono, who is a key part of the team and was crucial for them last year and kept them in some crucial games, particularly in the Europa League as well. So I just think at the start right now, I can't really see Sevilla doing that much uh, in this group, if I'm being honest. I can't see them beating Arsenal in any, any of the two legs. PSV is going to be a close one. I reckon they could probably snatch a win against the PSV when they're at home. And then we have Lens as well. Uh, I mean, that's, it's Tata. Sorry, lads. Um, bon voyage. But um, I feel it'll be Arsenal top and that one. And then PSV. That's how I'll probably see it. Um, do you agree? Disagree? Um, in terms of how I think the group will go, I definitely think Arsenal will get first. But I don't think it'll be in the, in the sense of what we just talked about with Man United and Bayern. I um, I see points being dropped left, right and centre by every team in this group. Purely because, like, when people saw this draw, it was like looking at a Europa League draw. Um, considering the, the huge absence we've had from Arsenal in Champions League football, Sevilla's ever-present in that competition. The same can be said for PSV. And Lens, they're not, you know, they're not a team to count out earlier. The French teams are never an easy team to beat, to be honest with you. And in that regard, I, I do think Sevilla, and they've lost three games and drawn one out of the last four games in La Liga. And it's an awful start. I mean, they had an awful season last year, domestically speaking. But they've just, they're topping it this year. And they just keep selling their star players um, I don't know if it's the financial issues. We know that they have financial issues, but they really need to change the way things are going because I'll have them as third with you, but I wouldn't even be surprised if they get, if they get fourth in the group, to be honest with you. Um, I do see PSV getting second because they have goals in them. Like, even losing Mohamed Kudus, um, they, they still have goals in them, and I do see them playing good football. And I do see them getting second place, but I don't think like we should cut out Lens. Lens is not in a situation where just severely they're severely sorry outstrength by the other teams. I think they will give a good run for it and potentially fight for a Europa League spot. I think that we could possibly see a season where Sevilla don't even finish third and they finish fourth. But for now, because I I'm trusting in them to turn it around. Because uh, Spanish teams, they just do well in Europe in general. I've got Arsenal first, PSV second, uh, Sevilla third, and Lens fourth. So, agreeing with you. Next up, Group C. Napoli, Real Madrid, Braga, and Union Berlin. Now, this is a group where we can just agree unanimously 
that the two teams qualifying, it's going to be Napoli and Real Madrid. And to be honest, I would have Real Madrid first and then Napoli second. Um, even though they've kept majority of their top players, Napoli, the loss of Kim Min-jae in the back, it really has made them vulnerable and they've dropped points in their last two matches. And I just don't think we're going to see them playing as well as we saw last year. So for that reason, that's why I'm putting Napoli second. And then um, the teams below, we have Braga and Union Berlin. Braga just sneaking, just by the hairs of their ass into Champions League last year, into the Portuguese League. And then we have Union Berlin, who last year were a revelation. Played some brilliant football, turned up, and they've had a terrific journey. And I think they will probably be the team to be uh, finishing in the Europa League spot of the group stage. But that is really all I could say on them two teams. I can't really see Braga really challenging for the Europa League. And I can't see Union Berlin challenging Madrid or Napoli for the top two. So I would have uh, Real Madrid, Napoli, then Union Berlin. I'm inclined to agree with you, mate. Um, Real Madrid, this is our competition. No disrespect to any other team in this group. Um, we're here to win it. So we're not worrying about Napoli. We're not worrying about Union Berlin. We're not worrying about Braga. We're not going to be complacent, I don't think, because um, we never take any opponent lightly, especially with someone like Carlo Ancelotti, who some people consider to be a conservative manager out of the top, top managers. Um, so even playing against Napoli with the form they're in, um, I don't think they have anything to worry us. Um, yes, they've kept hold of Ossiman and Kovacskielia. Sorry if I've butchered his name. Um, but losing Spalletti is the biggest loss to that team because he is a top, top manager. He solidified that last year with what he did with them. And he's done it previous clubs in the Serie A as well. And I think the new manager they've got, he's just out of his depth. He has no idea what to do with the star power he has. And the team's lost its DNA this season. They've really lost And they've lost its hunger. That's another thing. You cannot lose your hunger if you want to be striving for competition after competition, season after season. So I think they will probably lose to us both legs. I generally think that. And they'll get second because Braga, I mean... It's a Copenhagen situation. I don't think they're going to get any points. I really don't. So I think Braga will be an easy win for uh, easy six points for Napoli. In terms of Union Berlin, they've made some good acquisitions. You know, someone like Leonardo Bonucci is very good for that team. You've got players who've never played Champions League football, and someone like him, a leader. Uh, you know, a person who's played Champions League finals is in that squad now and he's able to, you know, lead them, even if he's not playing, because, you know, he's he's gone on in years. But that just that presence in general. And I, I think it will just be enough for them to get third place. Um, the only thing is with Union Berlin is they have proven to be underdogs and to proven to come out of upsets. So, and we all know Real Madrid at least once group one group stage game we just lose like whether it's sheriff a couple of years ago um beforehand you know it's been other teams we could potentially lose to union berlin i actually think we could drop points to them we should always struggle with german teams so i think getting a crucial point or even three points against real madrid could help them gain that third place spot so i'm going to agree with you in that regard but i think you know, Napoli have gotten lucky and so have Real Madrid with this draw. Uh, I'm, I'm not one to sugarcoat it. We have gotten pretty lucky considering the state of other teams in their groups. So we're in agreement. Real Madrid and Napoli to qualify. Union Berlin to drop down to Europa. And Braga, it's just no night. Yeah, you are no chance. Right, next up, Group D. Almost at the halfway point of all the groups, we have Benfica. Internazionale, RB Salzburg, and then Real Sociedad. Yet again, two teams to qualify. It's pretty straightforward for me. And it's really Inter and Benfica, the teams that are going to be qualifying um, to the knockout stages. And 
just a question on who you're going to put at number one, number two. And for me, uh, I don't like to give them any praise, but inside they do have a good, decent squad. Decent depth. Not bad attack, not bad defence. Uh, I do think that they'll probably finish first. There's Benfica. Still an exciting team to watch, play some good football. They've still got a few gems in their team, so I do think that they will have enough to qualify for the knockout rounds. So I have them second. Europa League, I reckon it is going to be a real, real tight one. This is going to be quite a close back and forth exchange between Salzburg and Sociedad for that Europa League spot. But Sociedad, like Sevilla, not as bad, but Sociedad... Not had the greatest of start in La Liga so far. They, I know they did very well to get Champions League last season in La Liga. And then Salzburg, they are a proven Europa League side. They've been in Europa League for a number of years and even snuck into the Champions League on many occasions. Um, I reckon it probably will be Salzburg, if I'm being honest. I reckon they'll probably just edge it and then Sociedad will get knocked out of Europe completely. That's just a feeling that I've got. I feel Inter, Benfica, then Salzburg, and then Real Sociedad fourth. But just. I think it would just be just. That's how I see it. Yeah, um, I'd agree with you in the sense of um, we've got two teams who are stronger than the others. Uh, definitely, I think this would be... I think Inter are going to cruise through. They will get first place. They have probably had one of the best transfer windows I've seen this summer. Bringing in Marcus Turam, Fratesi, what a signing and what a revelation he's looked. Um, even in terms of replacing Onana, I mean, a very good goalkeeper. If Jan Sommer is, is a very smart piece of business. In terms of, obviously, they've lost Skriniar. And you could probably correct me, who have they signed defensively, Jake? Uh well they got more depth at the full backs. They've got Quadrado, the snake. Yeah. At right back. That's the guy. Um in terms of centre halves, um I don't think they've really signed anyone that is like of starting quality. They still got the Vry as a depth player. Um but I don't think I think they signed a few youngsters. They haven't signed anyone um big in the the back line. Okay. From what I can recall. Okay. I mean, I know that they've got Alexis Sanchez back after um, losing Correa. That's a weird piece of business for me. I understand Correa wanting to play first team football, so good for him. But I just, they've looked on fire this year. I mean, they just beat AC Milan 5 1 in the Milan derby. And AC Milan were looking good before that game. So I do think Inter will get first place. I think we're going to see Martinez and Turam light it up as a duo. They're looking so good together. And you've got Barella behind them doing Barella things. DeMarco and even, you want to say Quadrado. I don't think Quadrado even benches Dumfries for me. I think Dumfries is quality at the moment. They're looking threatening. Um, Benfica, they've made some smart additions. I like the Angel Di Maria uh, re-signing. I think he brings a well-needed experience into that team because they normally have such a young side. And yeah, Benfica will always find a way to qualify unless they're in like a group of death. So I think Benfica will get second place comfortably. I'll agree with you a third place with Salzburg, despite them losing Benjamin Sesko, who's looked like a great signing by Leipzig. Um, purely because, yeah, Sociedad's not had a great start. Um, I'll probably have more um, of, uh, you know, a well-knowledge prediction of how they'll do after I watched them against Real Madrid. But I would say they're fourth for me. I've lost David Silva, who looked fantastic for them last year, despite his age. And he's going to be a key loss. Um, and he's obviously gone on to retire as well. Um, I just see Salzburg having youngsters year after year after year, just breaking through and lighting the Champions League on fire. Even if they don't, you know, qualify, they still look solid and they end up getting Europa League, as you said. I think it'll be a tough one. But I think Salzburg will sneak third place. And Sociedad, I think this will just be a season for them to forget. Okay, the next up, Group E. Now, this, I think, is going to be one of the most tightly contested groups here. 
we have Fernald, Atletico Madrid, Lazio, and then Celtic of Scotland. So, we uh, the big thing for me is probably Atletico because last year just completely out of the blue and like as much as you dislike them. I don't think any Spanish opposition fan or any fan expected Atletico to finish dead last in the Champions League group last year, in the group that they had. But this is quite similar to the group that we saw last year. A tightly contested group, and everyone thinking Atletico were going to be definite qualifiers. But I reckon this could be more of the same in terms of last year. Not Atletico finishing dead last. But a tightly contested group. We have Fern Order, a very good, decent side. And Lazio, who were, you know, one of the biggest shocks last year, finishing second in Serie A last year. And then we have Celtic. Um, well, I mean, I mean, yeah, dominating Scotland. And it's just between them and Rangers. But it's it's tough. I really don't know. I don't think Atletico are a guarantee because they've had a... Poor start, dropping some points against teams that they should be beating so far this year in La Liga. Um, well, I mean, I would probably have to go Atletico to qualify. And then I'm probably say Fernald. I would say Atletico and Fernald will be the two teams to qualify. And I think Lazio will probably be the one to drop down to Europa League because their team at this moment in time, they lost Milinkovic Savic who was their best player by a landslide, without a doubt, provided uh, security in that midfield. And with him gone, they have been awful this year. They have lost three of their four games this season in Serie A and just beat Napoli against the run of play in that match. And um, just looking at them going forward, they're not that menacing. They're defensively... Like, uh, on the wide areas, they're vulnerable. I can't see Lazio qualifying. And then we have Celtic. I just don't think that they have the capability to compete with these teams. So I've got Atletico first, Fernald second, and then Lazio third. Um, yeah, I see where you're coming from with the Atletico Madrid thing. Yeah, I didn't expect them to finish fourth. Um, what I will say is... They have started, apart from the upset we saw recently against Valencia, where they've lost 3-0 to them. Um, an unbelievable upset, I think. No one expected them to lose by that margin to Valencia. They've looked good in the sense of they're not actually playing the defensive Simeone style we all associate with them. When they're up against weak oppositions, they've actually looked like they want to work the ball. They look like they're not as direct and they like to play good football. And I just think Simeone's realised, yes, with his style of play, they can beat giants. They really can. They can be a very difficult team for the top, top teams to come up against. However, opposite uh, that end... Against the weaker teams, the weaker teams feel like they can get something out of the games because they have more possession. They have more involvement in terms of chances created. And I think he's noticed that and he's going to improve on that this year. And I think he will get first place quite comfortably with this team. Um, a great acquisition for his team has been Memphis Depay. I think he has been a huge addition to them. Griezmann looked unbelievable last year, domestically speaking at least. And I think we're going to see them to do a lot. Correa always seems to perform some way or another. They've got Carrasco as well. I just think they've got a lot of quality to not finish first in this group. In terms of second place, I kind of see where you're coming from with the Lazio end. Um, but they finished second last year, man. I, I think every team is entitled to have a little bit of a rough start. We've seen Napoli have a rough start and we think they're both going to finish. They're, they're going to finish second. Um, I just think Lazio will get it. I think Feyenoord and their manager, his manager's got them playing some top, top football. And they were unlucky not to end up in the final last year, European-wise. But I think Lazio, they'll do something with it. Because I love the signing of Kamada by them as well. I think Kamada is not going to be the best replacement for Milinkovic-Savage. But he'll be doing stuff that Milinkovic-Savage wasn't doing in terms of being as dynamic oh, yeah. as Milinkovic-Savage. Where he was more of a presence, more box-to-box -box threat. I think Kamada will be more dynamic and actually get further forward up the pitch where someone like Immobile, he's getting on an age, he can able be able to provide that dynamic play where Immobile can't anymore. 
I just think they'll finish second. It w it'll be very tight. It'll be very, very tight, in my opinion. And I think final will get third, and they'll be frustrated to get third. I think it'll be one of those situations where it'll be like the final game, and that game will decide which will finish second or third. Celtic, I saw them last year, and last year they had a top, top manager, Ange Postogoglu, managing them, and they still looked woeful. And I just can't see them doing that with a, a worse manager this year. So I think they're going to be the battering ram in this group. They're, they're just, you know, um, they are the victims of their own dominance. Uh, the same can be said recently with Bayern Munich winning their domestic titles and why they're not able to challenge as more as they used to in the European sense. They're just too good for their own good domestically and it's making them worse in the European stage. And I think something needs to be done about that Scottish league where it's just not Rangers and Celtic. And the further you down that um, table you go, you have got some poor, poor teams. And something needs to change domestically for them, for them to be able to compete on a European scale. So I'm going to go Celtic fourth. Right, now we're getting into the big one. The group of death. And this, for me, is the best group I have seen in a long, long, long time. We have Paris Saint-Germain, Borussia Dortmund, AC Milan, and now newcomers, Newcastle United, First time in the Champions League for nearly over 20 years. And they have got an unbelievable squad. All these teams have got unbelievable squads. Uh, I've got to be honest. No one in here is a guarantee. Not even Paris Saint-Germain. Because PSG this season, so far, have been shocking by their standards in the French League. They have been poor. Even with keeping hold of Kylian Mbappe, they have been struggling in matches and just getting past their only win this season by the hairs of their arse. This is one where I... It is really tough. And for me, the one team that I think would be the closest to a guarantee that I think will qualify, it is AC Milan. And that is why I'm putting AC Milan at number one. They are going to be the top team to qualify. Wow. And then... I probably would have to say Paris Saint-Germain, but for me, it is just, just damn. And then at number three, oh man, I have got Newcastle to finish third and then Borussia Dortmund finishing fourth. I never thought I'd say that. I'll be naming Champions League group and I'll be putting Dortmund fourth. But I think AC will probably get more points out of all these teams because at the minute they are the best informed team out of the four. And they have got some, and they have definitely got a bit more confidence of playing in the Champions League now after their run last year, beating some top teams to get to the semi finals. And with the likes of Liao, Pulisic doing well, I think they will edge it. And then PSG, as much as I don't think they're going to be. Uh, Playing as good as they should do, I think with the likes of Kylian Mbappe in your team, you're not going to get knocked out. So that is why I put PSG in there. But I do think it will just be slight. It, this is going to be close all across the board. I estimate like just two points or three points between last and first. It is going to be really tight. Like, Ash, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, well, first of all, I think domestically speaking, every single team in this group is kind of screwed. Because normally, even in, you know, not just Champions League, Europa League, Conference League now even, you'll have like one or even two teams in your group where you'll go, you know what, this is not going to be as tight. And, you know, my players won't need to be fully rested and raring to go to get the three points from this. And each of these, uh, every single game, you cannot afford to drop points. I, I actually do feel for every single team. And I don't think... It, any of these teams have started superbly the season. I'd probably say Milan, they, they just lost 5 1 to Inter. Just spoke about that. Newcastle, I mean, uh, they, they got absolutely demolished by Brighton the other day. You've got Dortmund, I've just, I'm just going to say out right, the, the biggest bottle job of a team I have seen since Tottenham Hotspur. Right, they're finishing fourth. They're just bottle jobs, honestly. And I, and I love them to bits, Borussia Dortmund, but they're actually bottle jobs. If you gave the spot to Frankfurt, they'd at least try and do something with it. But, you know, that's how I feel about Dortmund. I'm sorry, Dortmund fans. PSG, 
I think they've just made too many signings and that's why they're struggling at the start of the season. They've lost Neymar, they've lost Messi. Two huge names in football. They've also lost Sergio Ramos. They're, they're losing key, key players. Verratti's gone. So they're losing key members of the spine of this team. And I think the drop-off should be expected. Anyone who has any ball knowledge should know it's expected. Now, they have made some incredible replacements, though, for those players. You look at just the striker spot alone. They've got Conchalo Ramos and Colo Muani. Unbelievable, those two signings alone. They've also got Marco Asensio on a free. And they've got Usman Dembele, right? And then to top that with Kylian Mbappe, that front three, I don't think anyone will be able to control them from scoring. And I think their goal-scoring threat, Kylian Mbappe is just... He's unstoppable. I don't think you could put the best defender in front of him in the world right now and they, they will struggle against Kylian Mbappe. I think PSG will get first place. Purely because of that front lineup. Um, and also, they've got a manager, as much as I dislike the man, this man's won the Champions League before and done it in a, in a very strong fashion. And he plays a very good style of football. I probably wouldn't go up there with the best style of football, but he plays a very good style of football. If anyone's able to get, you know, some results out of this team, I think Luis Enrique is your guy. Second place, I'm going to agree with you in the sense of they'll qualify, it's AC Milan. Um, after Real Madrid, I've said it time and time again, this is their competition. They've won it seven times, okay? And you cannot count them out. They've made some brilliant signings. After losing Tonali, Loftus-Cheek has looked like a revelation in midfield. Um, we've also seen Pulisic actually be such a good influence in that team. So you've got Liao, Pulisic and Giroud who just performs and he just he's like fine wine. He's just getting better and better every season. So I think AC will have enough experience after going to the semis last year to qualify. And I think third place, Newcastle, that's what they will lack. They will lack the experience to push through. And I don't think they, did, they made enough signings to deal with the depth. Yes, they added Tonali. Yes, they added Harvey Barnes. It's not enough for me. They needed more depth. You know, the other day they had Fabian Cher missing at centre-back and pushed Dan Byrne in there. And they just looked like they, they crumbled. And they were leaking goals left, right and centre. And in the Champions League, you're going to have to rotate. You just, you're forced to. You, and you can't help it. And you need to have players inside, on your bench, sorry, who will be able to deliver against the top, top teams. And I think Newcastle won't have enough to deal with that. And I'll put them in third place. But I think they'll be able to do something in, in Europa League stage. Because I think January will come. They'll learn from their mistakes. And with the money they've got, they'll, they'll buy some players in January. And I think we'll see Newcastle probably even... I'm not, it's too early to say, but I could actually see them as potential Europa League winners. Even though Liverpool's in that competition. I'll go as far as saying that. But that's my prediction. PSG first, AC Milan second, Newcastle third and Borussia Dortmund fourth. Because we know why. Now we're going into Group G. And yet again, well, it's an absolute piss take. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't want to scream like conspiracy or anything. But how lucky do Man City get every single year? Uh, yeah, probably a bit of a old dosh, the old wonga that they're sending to the people upstairs. But this is a joke. This is an absolute joke. Look, it's such a piss take. Like, look, you've got Leipzig that probably could maybe challenge you for small periods of the match. But we saw what they did to them last year. We thought that they was going to make a tough game. 1-1 one, one in the first leg. Then they won 7-0. Haaland. That man raids and pillages more than the fucking Ragnar Lothbrok Vikings back in the day, mate. He's going to run riot with these teams. This is a group where it just can't be done. You can't have Red Star and Young Boys up against Man City. It should be illegal. This can't be a thing. Oh, I, I think with this one, we can just make it short and sweet on who's going to be top. It is Man City who are the odds-on favourites to win the Champions League this year and are going to be most people's uh, favourites this year. And then it's going to be Leipzig to qualify as well. I mean, look, Young Boys and Red Star, look, they they probably could have challenged if they had like a group such as Group 
E or maybe group uh, C, maybe group D. But I just don't think they can even challenge them. And then in terms of who's going to go to the Europa League, uh, it could be a toss of a coin, really. But I'll go Red Star Belgrade just because I think if young boys go over there, it's going to be a menacing atmosphere. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, you, you, you've you've hit it nail on the head. Uh, it screams corruption now at this point. Man City, I don't think I've ever seen them in a group of death. I don't think I've ever seen them get a tough draw, unless it's in the later stages of the Champions League, which is almost impossible to not get a tough draw. So uh, something needs to be done. Something needs to be investigated. I, I agree with you. What I will um, say is I disagree with your third place. I think young boys, they play good football. They always have. And I think they've been in the competition for a very long time now in terms of qualifying for it. And Red Star, they've only just recently started getting in there. And I think they'll finish fourth Red Star. And I think Young Boys finish third. So Leipzig could be the underdogs of this competition. They have made some fantastic acquisitions. Benjamin Sesko I spoke about. He is someone I want to watch this year. And 100% I want him to be an option for us to buy in the summer if he performs the way I think he will. He's a top, top striker. He's got more power or the same power as Haaland, as we saw. He's more both-footed than Haaland. He's in, he's got great aerial ability. He's a powerhouse at Haaland. But more than anything, I think he has more um, technique and he's better with his feet than Erling Haaland. So this season, he's a player to watch for sure. And the other one is, I don't know why they've loaned him out, is Xavi Simmons. PSG are absolute idiots for loaning this kid out because he is lighting it up for Leipzig. He was lighting it up in Eredivisie last year and he is going to be a huge asset to that team. And then you've already got the players already part of that team um, in the sense of like Danny Olmo. He, we see him performing time and time again in that, in that shirt and also the Spanish shirt. Um, so I think Leipzig will be our underdogs. I'm going to go as far as saying if they're lucky of a draw, potential semi-finalists. We're in with the final group, Group H. We have Barcelona of Spain, FC Porto, Shakhtar Donetsk, and then uh, poor little Antwerp. Uh, it's so sad. Look at that crest, man. It's so sad to look at with all them other ones there. They're, oh, they're, they are going to get shafted. They're going to get shafted. I'm not, not, sure, I'm not sure about that. Oh, mate, they got no chance, man. They're not even going to get a point. I'm just going to say, Antwerp are not getting a point. They're not getting a point. I can't believe what they're I'm hearing. They're not. They're not getting a point, lad. Okay. Uh, Go on. Barcelona, Spanish champions last year, and they played some brilliant football defensively just on top. Like, they've got an absurd amount of clean sheets, conceded so few goals. I think it was like 12, 13 goals, something like that. Something stupid. Uh, they're definite top for me. And I think the curse is now going to be lifted. I, I was half expecting with the draw, they're just going to draw Bayern Munich and get <laughs> done over again. <laughs> just go back to the Europa League for uh, three years on the bounce. But now this is a group that they should win with some flying colours. And second place, it's going to be a tight one between Shakhtar and Porto. Porto managed to make it through um, into the knockout stages last year and then got knocked out by Inter in the round of 16. And then Shakhtar, you know, very good side. I mean, they even got a point against you lot last year in the group stage. Like, they got some decent players. And it's quite tight. I can't really determine, really, with any certainty between Porto and Shakhtar, who's a better team. Um, but I feel... Porto would probably just edge it. I would probably go with Porto at number two and then Shakhtar Donetsk at number three. Uh, Paul Le Wantwerp, uh, just say your prayers and take your vitamins. Uh, okay. I don't know what Jake uh, Jake has in terms of an agenda against Antwerp. <laughs> um, look, they've done some. Just look at that crest alone. Look at like, the crest alone. Look J at it, Jake. They've done good enough for them to be there instead of you know Club Bruges and um, you know Anderlecht. Which, uh, then they should not be taken lightly. Yeah, but they're, 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 yeah, but come on now. Come yeah, on. so you know they've replaced those teams in this um, in this year's Champions League, and Shakhtar. I mean, they've lost Mudrik. 
since last year. So, you know, that's a big miss for them. Um, After his performances, that must be a blessing in the sky. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know he struggled for Chelsea, but when he was in a Shakhtar shirt, he was top, top draw. So, um, Shakhtar, I think they're going to finish fourth. I actually do. I think Antwerp might actually sneak in third. Um, purely because, you know, the way Shakhtar is, and, you know, I feel for the people of Ukraine, I, I, they're, they're going to struggle in terms of finances and in that regard as well. And the players, you know, mostly being Ukrainian, it's going to be playing in the back of their minds. And I think uh, Antwerp are just going to be that team who's hungry in the Champions League and they're just going to do something. They might do. Um, but I think first and second will beat both of these teams. Porto finished second for me. Um, they somehow held on to him, Mehdi Taremi, my Iranian man. Um, and he's a top, top striker in terms of beating these quality kind of teams. And the Porto manager, he's been at that club for a while now. Yeah, and he's he's proven to just consistently get his teams out of the group stages of the Champions League. And I think he's going to deliver in that regard. Um, Barcelona, they've gone on and strengthened their team again. They've replaced an ageing Jordi Alba, an ageing uh, Busquets. They've gone on to obviously replace Dembele, who was a surprising you know sale for them. Uh, with, but they brought in João Felix. They brought in João Felix. Uh, they've also gone on to bring in João Cancelo. And then the youngster, Yamal, coming through. He looks absolutely mustard. I have to say as a Real Madrid fan. And hopefully he doesn't have the injury problems we saw of Ansu Fati. And, you know, I, may, I don't want to wish injury on any player, even if they're a Barcelona player. I, all I can say this is, if Xavi somehow bottles this group and finishes even third, Barcelona fans, I don't care what he's done for your club. And I don't care how well he does in La Liga. He has to go. In the amount of money you have invested in this man, despite your, you know, your debt, despite, you know, everything going on, the amount you've backed this man, and he does not qualify with this group. Oh, my God. You, you need to let him go. You need to let him go. I, you give this it's group, you give this team, sorry, yeah, and this group to Sam Allardyce, for God's sake, and he qualifies first place. That's all I'm saying, right? And that's why I'm saying, Xavi, he has to deliver. He has to get first place. And he will. Um, what I will say is, they're a team to watch out for now in the Champions League. They're in the knockout stages, and you've got to watch out for them, right? Like you said, defensively speaking, if you are solid in the Champions League defensively, and you have uh, a style of play that guarantees goals like Barca does, and you've got someone like Lewandowski who guarantees it and then some, they're going to be going on to the later stages. And I'd probably put them as my, like, fourth or fifth favourites. Um, my my probably, um, my favourites will still be Man City, Bayern Munich after adding Kim Min Jae, and, of course, Harry Kane. L unlucky to miss out on Polina, which would have been another top acquisition. They'll be my second favourites. I'll make us third. I can't put us any higher without a top, top striker. Maybe we get one in January. Maybe this system delivers in the Champions League. But I doubt it will in, t in terms of the top, top teams, like I've mentioned. And I'll probably put Barca four favourites, four for fifth favourites um, in there. And yeah, that's what I've got to say about that group. We've covered all the groups. And like Ash just mentioned, they're talking about favourites, uh, having Man City. Yeah, Man City. Favorites. And I probably would be inclined to agree. Um, but I do feel, like you mentioned... If you are to get the striker that just does the business and then you're able to go back to a 4-3-3 with the team that you currently have at the minute, I could actually even end up putting you as number one favourite if you do it. But if you're remaining with this formation currently and playing the sort of system, I can't really see you going on to win it and I probably would have Man City up there and then you can't count Bayern Munich out at all, but... So that's really all I have to say on the matter. But there we have it, guys. There's our preview and our prediction for the Champions League group stage, giving you our opinions on who's the current favourite at the minute. And fast forward this towards February. It may change. You never know. But as of right now, that is what we have it as. Thank you for tuning in for this video today. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to A&J Reacts, 
Come join the A&J family. Much love. Ciao, ciao.